This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from OpenTuition.com. Chapter 3 is relatively short. It deals with auditors' rights, their duties, appointment, resignation, and the regulatory framework within which they operate. First of all, auditors' rights. And very important rights to access all records in the audit client. This can be board minutes, it can be payroll records, it could be uh, appraisal records of employees, contracts. Any documentation, any part of the records at all, uh, the auditors have a right to examine. Secondly, they are uh, entitled to all information explanations Uh, that they require in their quest for sufficient, appropriate audit evidence. A director is not allowed to say, I can't tell you because it's confidential. The argument is that, of course, uh, once you open the door to keeping some information back, claiming it's confidential, uh, how do you know whether it's uh, being kept back for you know, proper confidential reasons or whether it's just the director looking for an excuse to hide something. Auditors are allowed uh, to attend general meetings and they're allowed to speak at general meetings on relevant matters. If you remember, (coughs) the general meeting is where all of the members are invited uh, and you have a big meeting, usually directors on a kind of a stage, the members all sitting in an auditorium and the members often will vote at these meetings. But this is the one time where there's a direct, very absolutely direct communication possible uh, between the auditor, who will normally be sitting up kind of often alongside the directors, uh, but uh, making clear that the auditor is not a director, uh, can address directly uh, the members. And we'll see in a couple of slides, it is the members of the company, its shareholders who appoint the directors, and it is to those members I beg your pardon, it is the uh, uh, members of the company, the shareholders who appointed the, 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 the auditors, and the auditors report to the members of the company. They can receive proposed resolutions. Uh, interesting one, before last there, they can resign before order completion. Why would an auditor uh, uh, resign maybe before the start or halfway through an audit? Well, what would happen if the directors were not giving you the right information? If they were not giving you access to to certain records and so on, uh, you know that uh, you won't be able to complete the audit uh, properly. uh, And there's danger there for the auditor. Uh, There's a danger there being uh, associated with a company uh, which is maybe trying to bury fraud or a company which is trying to confuse the auditor. So probably better to stop and get out, even with the risk of unpaid fees, Uh, than try to hang in there and suffer perhaps great reputational damage. And then the auditor can also have a right of information circulated to shareholders. Uh, For example, what would happen if the financial statements uh, came out and they were wrong? Uh, You know, two months later, it was discovered there was some error in the financial statements, a serious error. Then it is possible for the auditors to insist that an amended set of financial statements would be sent to the members. The uh, duties uh, of the uh, uh, auditors here, the uh, prime one is to issue an audit report giving uh, opinions on whether the financial statements show a true and fair view and whether the financial statements have been uh, uh, properly prepared. Uh, We'll see in a moment that upon uh, resignation or being sacked, the auditors also must issue a statement of circumstances. Uh, this is basically saying why they resigned or why they were sacked, and this goes to uh, the uh, members of the company. Uh, and also, after they resign, the auditors are supposed to uh, talk to the new auditors, letting the new auditors know whether there's anything uh, that they should know about the client, maybe some major disagreement or some even suspicion of fraud, Maybe that's why the old auditors resigned. 
appointment, resignation and uh, removal and appointment, uh, the uh, auditors have to be reappointed at every annual general meeting. Uh, so it requires them to be put up uh, for appointment again and for the members to vote on that. Resignation. Uh, auditors might resign for what I would call innocent purposes. It might be that a client has simply got much larger and more complicated than the relatively small firm of auditors can deal with. Uh, maybe the auditors kind of getting towards retirement once they're kind of cut down a little bit. There are plenty of innocent reasons for resignation. The big, big doubt, however, the big worry is that the auditors are resigning because of some major, perhaps, lack of confidence or, or major lack of cooperation uh, with the directors. Uh, and it's important for shareholders and others to know why have the auditors resigned? Is there something, some dark secret behind this, so to speak? Or is it a perfectly innocent, uh, just the client has been outgrowing us and you needn't have to worry too much about that? That is called a statement of circumstances. The circumstances of why you resigned. Removal. Uh, again, the big problem is, uh, of course, you're always suspicious that maybe the auditors are being removed by the directors uh, uh, because they're too good. So the directors can't uh, re reappoint new ones, but they would uh, suggest that the auditors were replaced. Why is that? It could be that they think the auditors are doing a bad job, that the companies become international, that the auditors are still small and provincial. There could be uh, a, a policy to change auditors every five years, every ten years, to get a, a fresh set of eyes on it. Uh, but always uh, the suspicion we're being sacked or they're being sacked because they're too good. And again, uh, the uh, outgoing auditors, the sacked auditors, if you like, are entitled to and required to file a statement of circumstance at the company's office explaining the circumstances of their removal. They're also allowed to speak at the general meeting where their term of office would have expired. So you get a kind of last chance of telling it straight to the members uh, to whom really they owe the prime duty. Regulatory environment. Uh, several different layers, if you like. First of all, uh, members of the ACCA are regulated by the ACCA. ACCA looks after your qualification, your exams. Uh, it insists that there's continuing professional development. Uh, it looks after behaviour. If you're found guilty of a, a crime, for example, or maybe found guilty of not carrying out an audit properly, they can fine you or ask you to leave the um, uh, profession, leave the ACCA. And in many ways, this uh, is how a professional qualification like ACCA uh, is different to an MBA. Once you have an MBA degree, it's yours for life, uh, no, ma no matter how evil you become. But you're a member of the ACCA, they retain disciplinary powers over you, and you can be thrown out, or fined, or they ensure that you keep up to date with current developments. In the UK, there's the FRC, that's the Financial Reporting Council, uh, which is our, the UK, regulators for reporting and governance. So that, if you like, is a kind of statutory uh, body. And then internationally, there is the IFAC, the International Federation of Accountants. What they try to do, uh, one of the important things they try to do, is to bring uh, the preparation of financial statements and the audit of those financial statements into line internationally, so that no matter uh, which nationalities, uh, you know, for whatever nationality the company is whose financial statements you're looking at, they're drawn up according to the same accounting standards and the same standard of auditing will be done. Uh, finally, not too important for you, a public interest oversight board. Uh, this has been set up because it was uh, felt that perhaps the, the regulation of uh, auditors is, is, is almost too inwardly looking. It's kind of auditors looking after auditors, accountants regulating accountants. But of course, very much what accountants do when they're auditing is they are uh, p p p doing the audit 
on financial statements, which are going to go to a wide range of other businesses like banking, like insurance, like stockbrokers, like investment trusts and so on. And it was thought maybe quite useful to get some input into how effective the uh, regulatory environment and the accounting standards and auditing standards were. Get a a bit of input from a, a wider variety of users of the financial statements. IFAC, uh, IFAC's purposes, as well as what I said uh, there, uh, to serve the public interest, strengthen the worldwide accountancy profession, establish and promote adherence to high quality professional standards. Within IFAC, you have the IAASB, uh, the International Auditing and Assurance Standards Board. These are the people who basically developed uh, ISAs, uh, auditing standards, uh, uh, for to, to, to get kind of international quality almost. There's the IESBA, the Ethics Board. Uh, this uh, uh, set will be looking at ethics in uh, the next uh, chapter. Uh, this sets out uh, ethical guides under which accountants should act. We'll see words like independence, uh, integrity, professional competence and so on. Uh, within the requirements for professional accountants. And finally, there's the TAC, not so important uh, for you, Transnational Auditors Committee. Many companies now, of course, are international or raise money uh, on international markets. And we just have to make sure that uh, we take into account international considerations when designing accounting standards or uh, audits. Who can be an auditor? Well, you have to be, in the UK, a member of a recognised qualifying body. That's the ACCA. You must be a member of... Uh, the, uh, basically, the recognised qualifying body looks after your qualifications. Uh, and then, to make sure you stay uh, righteous, uh, the, you have to be a member of the recognised supervisory body, which uh, the ACCA is also one uh, there. Directors may not be, uh, big one auditors may not be directors or employees of the company. Uh, they have to be independent, really, uh, from that. And they are not allowed to be an employee or business partner of a director or employee of the client. 